Catrion Gray, some interview. I think I'm gonna react to her one of her interviews today. So I'm really excited about it. She is like the Miss Universe, recently crowned Miss Universe, and I just <laughs> I'm just reacting to Philippine singers a lot. So I was kind of interested in because she was the first Philippine to win the like pageant, and she is also crowned Miss Universe 2018. So I'm really really in interested in that thing. So I'm really interested in you know pageants and all that stuff so yeah let's react to it hey guys if you're going to like my reaction please click the like button and do not forget to subscribe if you want me to react to any other video please link it down in the comment section and let's get on with it three two one it's guys download Catriona Gray was just 13 years old when her mom had a dream that she would become Miss Universe, walking along the stage in a red dress. And on December 16th, just days before her 25th birthday, the woman previously known as Miss Philippines did just that. Now as Miss Universe 2018, Catriona is dedicated to changing the lives of other children to allow them to follow their own dreams. Let's take a listen to her talking about her platform. Okay, this time, if this is the first time I'm listening to her, so I'm... I think I'm really gonna impress by her. And she's really beautiful, yeah. I think I have seen her photos in the newspaper and stuff. And she's really beautiful. Wow! Congrats, Philippines! Okay, it's kind of late, but yeah, I can do that. Congratulations! It's a really proud moment for all of the people, yeah. I just really like her eyes. They are so beautiful. Like, she's so beautiful. Damn! <laughs> Look at her dress. Her dress is so awesome. I think they're gonna match. Already seen this clip. Hmm, okay, that's it. <laughs> that's crazy. I'm sitting here like beaming watching that. I obviously was not the person who became Miss Universe 2018. Um, and the one thing that I have to ask, I'm sure you hardly remember it. Um, but I know Demi, who is the previous Miss Universe, was the one that crowned you, and I noticed that she whispered something in your ear. And every time I've watched this, I want to know what she said. <laughs> well, actually, well, she's she like, it's a little bit loose, so be careful doesn't fall off. It was as practical as that. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm so happy to be here. My name is Catriona, mm -hmm. and I've been looking forward to this. She has so pretty smile. I'm very excited. Yeah. Well, we have the crown right here, and I'm super excited about that, too, because it is beautiful, and I might just have to see it. Um, but I like that it was something as practical as that. Oh, it's so pretty. It's going to be something like super inspiring, whatever. And that would have just gone oh, sorry, through one point. ear and out the other at that point. So any advice I'm sure you could have gotten at that point was welcomed. Well, I think at that point I was just, um, you know, I, I don't know if you guys have ever known this, or like when you get into that situation and your adrenaline's pumping and everything just happening at a million miles an hour, and I couldn't absorb anything. <laughs> <laughs> the whole night after the crown was placed on my head just felt like I was in a dream state. It didn't feel real yet. Which, you know, I know this happens I quite a lot. With the like actors and stuff, they always say this thing. Process something that would happen in a matter of seconds to be announced. Yeah. It really just takes so long to sink in. 
it's kind of magical i think i really want to experience that but i'm not just not qualified for it yeah definitely became miss philippines how does that compare to now becoming miss universe it's so different because um competing for miss philippines i really just feel like i'm a candidate i'm not representing my country just yet um so when i do get the honor of knowing that i'll wear a philippine sash i really wanted to embody it oh. so even so proud woman just such a proud moment i wanted to showcase the filipino textiles our fabrics our silhouettes and our symbolism um and i researched about our culture and our history and you know there was so much more weight to it it wasn't just i'm candidate number this i'm a miss philippine and this sash is not just lettering it's a country so there was that weight that's how you represent and it's so even hearing you talk about that i can't even imagine um then getting whisked away to new york of all places so you were in thailand Ooh. representing the philippines and then you get taken to america and it's just a, it's so much and i'm sure you kind of just lose track of who you are what you're even doing in those moments um now that you're settled here is it crazy to think that you're representing the philippines but now you're living in the us no definitely um there is that that whole realization of a oh, wait i'm i'm not just speaking um, mainly to filipinos anymore i'm speaking to a global audience and with that comes an amazing platform but also i really have to learn as i with go great along, powers come learn. great responsibilities by the responsibility i've been given um so i'm really just learning every step of the way um actually after i was cr um, crowned in thailand in bangkok i was able to go back home oh. to the philippines so i i hid all christmas we're going back from my homecoming oh in i was a hermit for the new year I didn't know that they celebrate Christmas. I think they have own festival or something. That's new to me. She watches the reaction videos. And you talking uh -huh. about that universal platform. I think you're kind of I'm also Miss Universe for this role. Um you grew up in Australia. Your dad is Scottish and your mom is Filipino and then you moved to the Philippines. You also went to school in the US? Yeah, I studied by Carson. Okay. Yeah. So you kind of have done it, seen it all, I feel <laughs> like. So how are you going to take those experiences and living in these two very different countries and experiencing different cultures into your role as Miss Universe? Um I really feel that growing up in a cohesion of cultures really made me have an open mind to how different cultures can Yeah, be. that's kind of happens when you change schools a lot. How that It happened with me too. It kind of happened. And it's really difficult. I swear it's so difficult. The best of both worlds, I really feel like and um I was I had the pleasure She's really positive about it. I'm not really a positive of them. That's true. Share about not only like our favorite places in our country, <laughs> find out where we want to go, but also like how is it that we go about our daily lives? What are our values that we talk mm. about by our families? What was in grade? It's kind of community is a tight knit community. That forms, I think. Some interesting conversations and I think that's a great thing. Yeah. Yeah, I even saw just um doing some research and seeing what people were saying on Twitter. There were a ton of people <laughs> from Australia that Twitter. were like, hey, she's ours. <laughs> um which i thought was really funny um and also like was it weird at all to be competing against miss australia um no cuz i really feel like a miss philippine um i just yeah i feel like a filipina a filipino woman and it just so happens that um when i was growing up i was very much an australian and i think you can be both Oh my god i just really loved her right now because she has this confidence going on her i literally loved her that's the confidence i want this is australia but i am a miss philippines but i can't blame them from being excited from you know really feeling the high spirits of the season too so i'll let them have that well you also competed you were little miss philippines 
I was. Yeah, like, so um, you've, you've rocked this title for a while. <laughs> um, can you tell us a little bit about those younger experiences? I think it's so funny because everyone always says, like, this can't be your first pageant. And I try to tell them I'm really not a pageant girl. I never dreamed of being a beauty queen, which is true, but it's hard to justify when it's like, well, when you were five, you were in Little Miss Philippines, <laughs> right? Blame my mom for that. <laughs> <laughs> my mom and my dad are just the proudest parents, um, and I'm very blessed to have such. They should be. And yeah, I was five. She is old. really beautiful. Philippines, I don't remember much. And she but is, I know seems to be really smart. In the talent competition, I danced and lip synced to "Stop Right Now" by the Spice Girls. That's amazing. I had a matching silver That's amazing. I love Spice Girls. And I was just yeah, I was feeling myself. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. And you're, you were listening, but you actually sang. Yeah. So you went um, to school for music. Can you tell us a little bit? Philippines are really talented. How can they sing, dance, same time? I just don't know. It's really been throughout my whole life. Um, I grew up with three generations of music. Yes. Because my dad wow. was born in the 40s, my mom was born in the 60s, and I'm born in the 90s. So you can imagine our radio at home is always skipping around the different generations and I was always in school choir growing up. I was the leader of my jazz band. I was a musical. It's like a treasure, you know, you have that treasure. I had never planned on pursuing music, but when I think about it, it's really something that I've always been passionate about. It's always something that brought me so much joy. So, yeah, it's something I definitely want to pursue. And and actually, a month and a half ago, I believe, I actually released my first original called Britain is Together. Ooh. Oh God, that's amazing. Oh, God. You, like, I feel like you're like the true triple threat when I hear about all this. Um, but the one thing it's kind of seems like that. She is a threat. Your childhood and your foundation, your roots with your parents and growing up. Um, and I think that's really important to your platform because now you're kind of looking to give back to children and invest in their education. So can you tell us about Oh, that's the cause I think she went for. I grew up in Australia and I found myself in the Philippines. I had never experienced poverty firsthand. Like, of course, I've seen it on the TV, on the news, on, on social media feeds. But um, when I was able to experience it myself, like being there um, and seeing it and sensing it with all of my senses and seeing the reality of it, it impacted me so strongly. Um, especially, I found myself in a place called Pondo, Manila. It's literally within Manila, our capital city of the Philippines. And it's known as a garbage dump. Oh. All of the trash on the street goes. And okay, I, I have heard about, about it, and it's yeah. not really a good place to be seen. And finding and selling recyclables to feed the families. So, if you can imagine, the scenery there is... I have seen this video on it. it it's, it's very... Um, Mommy, bad me! When I saw it. Ha, okay. They don't even have toys to play with, but they find things in the trash. And, you know, some of them don't get the reality of an education. And maybe if they do... I have seriously seen this, this video and it's really, really not a good video to be seeing. It's like so you get a reality to check. How lucky am I that I was born into a circumstance that I was able It does to feel like I just really feel that kind of That's a really good thought. To give them a love for learning, they could have a successful career and then hopefully find work that fits for their family after. That's really so nice. That's really nice. And they give free, um, free okay, I also heard about this like uh, foundation. foundation, I think. And I know you spent some time with those kids as well, right? Yeah, I've worked in Tondo as like I help out in class, you know, with storytelling and. You know, the little games and songs that we teach the kids. It's really a creative environment that's colorful because we want children to fall in love with learning at a young age. And so I work a lot with the younger kids. I've also worked with some of the teens because a lot of them have dropped out of school or they just don't have an interest in school. So it's really engaging them again and, and finding something that they're interested in and want to pursue. That's so awesome. Thank you. Um, and Speaking of your platform, <laughs> she's so cute. I also Thank have to tie you. to social media a little bit because yeah. the Miss Universe pageants have gone beyond the time when social media even existed, mm -hmm. but now I feel like it's such a huge part, and I couldn't mm -hmm. help but notice that you gained 
three million followers in two to three weeks or something crazy like that. Wow. So what kind of role do you think social media is really playing <laughs> in the pageant and then now getting your platform out there? Um, like first I'll say like that leap in followers was just it, it took me by so much surprise because I still feel like the same girl from like a year ago, you know? I don't feel like I've changed that much. But to see that I have such this 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 huge platform now and so many people are listening to what I have to say, it really makes me want to orientate towards something that will really educate people, raise awareness, do something more than you know, show I love how she tackled this question, I think. Um, but social media has definitely um, revolutionized or transformed the world of pageantry and not just pageantry but any social cause that we like to lend our voice to or really how does. we inform each other, how we connect. Um, and that's why I think it's a powerful, powerful tool that really has the potential to do so much good. And that's what, as Miss Universe, I really want to utilize as a tool to, as I said, educate, create awareness, draw people to causes that they might not have known about or, you know, connect them to it in some way, somehow see themselves in that person or in that cause or... So, yeah, I think social media is an amazing it is it is it is super big is a bit overwhelming especially when you get them like that fast you're like what do i do what do i post what do i say everybody's listening everybody's watching um and including mm -hmm, some of the mm -hmm. fans are some pretty big names now which i think is very exciting um i know that tyra banks actually retweeted wow one of your walks from the pageant i died so i was <laughs> we were we were having dinner um after rehearsals um and and literally i was just sitting there and we're all tired and i just ate so i'm having a bit of a food coma and i'm i'm sitting there and then i start getting tagged and it's tyra banks and i just no look around deal. to my table and like no one's noticing that i'm freaking out and then i go to my friend miss denmark and tweet i'm like tyra banks just tweeted at me <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy. And like, she is so sweet. She is so sweet. It's the, the phenomenon of pageantry, the way that it's able to reach so many different markets or countries and people is just crazy. And to have Tyra Banks like comment on my song, <laughs> I was like, oh my gosh, if Tyra approves, then I, you know. <laughs> Tyra approves, so that's all you need. Um, but even you talking about pageantry and touching so many people, I know that especially um, in the US, I'm not sure about in other places, but there is some criticism of pageantry and the whole idea of beauty pageants. Um, so I wanted to know a little bit about your experience as Miss I Miss. Uh, if, you know, pageantry is looked at in a different way or even how you combat some of those um, more negative criticisms. I can totally see how some people can have a negative perception of beauty pageants, but I feel that that's a draw. They do the have so, so many fans of mine are having like that perspective. Journey or what they represent because these days especially with the women that i've competed with in this universe and the women that i've talked to they all have causes or they all have a, a bigger reason for wanting to pursue miss universe and oh. it's about the platform which is so amazing to see it's really kind of good thing it's really good can be so multifaceted like you can't mm -hmm. just be a model but you could be someone who also is a lawyer or a budding doctor. That's why I like this universe thing. This and I really love their interviews. They really, actually, they are representing something. That's why I liked it. I just hate Insta models, but I just love this like pageant thing. We don't have Super Bowl, but we have the three Bs, which is boxing, basketball, and beauty pageant. <laughs> and um, <laughs> you know, as a Miss Philippines, there is a well, not even as a Miss Philippines yet, as a candidate, there is a certain pressure because so many people get so passionate about candidates and who's competing and everything. And there's there's a pressure on them. It's like pressure. As a candidate, it was mental fortitude because 